Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on another family of the mattress sutures, the horizontal mattress sutures family. Our members are about six different versions. Each one was uh, modified in a special way, slight modification, to provide uh, support for a special function, either a version, inversion, or accommodating a corner skin flap. We'll go through them all. The key word for the um, function of the horizontal mattress sutures is a better spread of the tension along the wound edge. The horizontal mattress suture is not just two simple interrupted sutures joined together. Uh, there is more to it because you have these long strands of the suture lines uh, parallel to the wound edge. The, uh, support the wound during the uh, crucial period of healing uh, in a much efficient way than just two individuals um, uh, interrupted simple sutures. Because of this, the horizontal mattress suture is particularly useful in areas of high tension, like if you are um, repairing tendons, for example, or uh, in areas where the skin is very weak or a fragile, like if the patient is uh, diabetic or elderly or have um, uh, been on steroids, for example, for a longer period. They are also useful if you are dealing with vascular tissue that is bleeding during the uh, suturing process, like in scalp wounds, because the tension provided by these strands would also help uh, as a hemostatic effect. The configuration here is two points on each side of the wound edge. All are equidistant from the wound edge. And because of this, it's termed horizontal uh, mattress uh, in contrast to the vertical mattress where you have the four points of penetration all in a, a straight line perpendicular to the wound edge. Um, the dimensions of the wound here is a little bit different also. Uh, it's usually six millimeters from the wound edge for the four points. Um, that's a little bit more than the simple interrupted suture where you go four millimeters from the wound edge or uh, the uh, vertical mattress where you go for the far point about eight millimeters from the wound edge. So you start with four points uh, and you go from one point on one side to the other, like in a simple interrupted suture, change the direction of the needle and go to the other side. And then you tie the knot on the side that you initially started with. And you are left with two strands of the uh, sutures parallel to the wound edge. And this gives a little bit of a version of the wound. Because you end up having a significant amount of the sutures above the surface, uh, there is a potential to, to develop this railroad track uh, scar. It's a very ag ugly scar in the exposed areas. Uh, that's why it's advisable to tie the knots over small bolsters of gauze or uh, um, to remove the uh, sutures a little bit earlier than what you usually do with the simple interrupted sutures. Um, but you can also have uh, some simple interrupted sutures in between your horizontal mattress sutures to provide uh, some support to the wound after removing, uh, after the early remover of the horizontal mattress sutures. The classic horizontal mattress suture will provide some aversion of the wound. It's usually used for the skin uh, suturing. Uh, and this is because you end up having two parallel strands of the suture parallel to the wound edge, and you have tied the knot towards the uh, surface that's being averted. If inversion is required for any reason, like if you are suturing a hollow viscous, like doing a pharyngoplasty, for example, uh, then you reverse the configuration 
and this is going to produce inversion of the wound. This is a diagram of the wound seen from the other side, seen from the deeper side. If you end up having the suture line on the deeper side of the wound and having two parallel strands of the suture perpendicular to the wound edge, then you provide inversion of the wound rather than aversion. You start from the downside of the wound, go up, and then continue in the usual way from one point to the other. And you end finally with the other end of the suture on the deeper side of the wound. So the knot will be on the deeper side. And this is going to cause the inversion of the wound edge. If when you tighten the sutures, you'll see a little bit of inversion here in the wound edge. The third member of the family is the interrupted cruciate stitch, which provides a faster closure and also provides a better uh, dispersion of the tension along the wound edge. Uh, the configuration here is a slight modification. You still have four points all equidistant from the wound edge, uh, but the configuration here, you end up with the suture lines rather than being parallel to each other uh, intercepting to uh, and interlocking to disperse the tension in a better way. So you still have the same four points in their usual position. You start the first connection, but rather than going here, you go to the other side and then return back. And by doing this, you end up having the two ends of the strands on the opposite sides of the wound edge. It's like a cruciate configuration here, which provides better spread of the uh, tension along the uh, wound edge. If the surface to be sutured is angled rather than being straight, uh, like if you are dealing with wounds of uh, V-shaped or X-shaped or Y-shaped or T-shaped, um, then you have two issues here. Uh, the first is that the blood supply to the tip of the angled part of the surface is obviously reduced uh, compared to uh, the situation if the uh, skin edge or other surfaces are flat. The other is you need maximum precision here to place the tip where it should lie on the opposite side of the surface to be sutured. So you need good uh, opposition at the area uh, of the tip. Uh, the corner stitch is a slight modification of the horizontal mattress suture to provide these two extra functions. Uh, to preserve the blood supply to the tip of the angle skin and provide good opposition of the tip with the other part of the skin. So you start from the wider side of the surface and then go to the corner skin, but this time you don't penetrate the surface. You just take a bite of the deeper dermis and come from the other side without penetration of the surface. That's why it's called half buried suture. And then return back to the wider side of the skin. And by this you have preserved the blood supply to the tip and also provided good opposition of the angle where it should uh, rest finally. One other variant of the horizontal mattress sutures is the Halstead inverting suture, which is a hybrid suture with a vertical mattress and a horizontal matrix uh, component. 
uh, needed to uh, suture hollow viscous like pharynxes or stomachs or intestine. It's basically uh, two vertical matrices joined together um, to, so that to provide a horizontal matrix configuration at the end. So you have two Lampert, which is a variant of the vertical uh, vertical uh, matrix suture, uh, two Lampert sutures here uh, connected at the two ends to provide the horizontal matrix configuration. And you just have two points of penetration on one side and two other points on the other side or in a vertical line. So that's the classic Lampert's vertical incision meant to provide inversion of the wound edge. Now, rather than tying the knot on the Lampert, you continue to do another Lampert in the reverse direction. going from this side to the other. So you end up having two bits of suture parallel to the wound edge. Like in the configuration of the horizontal mattress suture. You have two vertical sutures and one horizontal. And when you tighten the knot, it would produce the required inversion and good dispersion of the wound tension. That's the inversion required. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the variance of the horizontal mattress sutures. Salaamu Alaikum.